It's my feel good breakfast show. Welcome back. You are live with Expresso as we now start a very important conversation, certainly one for parents to be. World Prematurity Day is a vital, vital day. It's recognized annually on the 17th of November to raise awareness around the challenges and the burden of the preterm births faced by babies themselves and, of course, the families that are supporting them. It is quite something to deal with. In the morning, this morning, we are joined by Dr. Gugu Kali to unpack this all-important topic. And if you have any questions or maybe some nice positive stories that you'd like to share about your preemie journey, then head over to the Express of Fake, uh, Facebook page. Doc, great to be joining you. Um, maybe let's set the scene here. What, at what point is a pregnancy, uh, the baby considered to be premature? What is that window? Um, okay, thanks for having me. Um, the, so, so babies that are born before 37 completed weeks after the last menstrual period, that would be considered premature. How prevalent is this? How many babies face this, um, this risk? Uh, so prematurity is quite a big problem worldwide. Uh, about 15 million babies worldwide are born every year. Uh, before, pre, um, before term. Wow. And if I had to estimate in our country, that's over 100,000 babies every year. So more than one in 10 babies. Wow, so it's very so prevalent. It's so the management big. of the outcomes then becomes vitally important. Yes. How do we improve those outcomes? Are we getting it right here in this country? Um, well, it varies a little bit, and, and progressively care is, is getting better, but it is still a big problem. Um, so one, one of the ways that people can help is to make sure that they, they firstly plan to get pregnant, and then once they've planned, and then to attend antenatal care so that they get as good care as they can so that if there are problems and if we know that the baby is likely to come prem premature, then we can do everything we can to, to improve the likely outcome of the baby. What are, let's push to the negative end of the scale, what are some of the, the worst outcomes in this space? What are the real dangers? Um, so so the, the absolute worst is, it, it is the leading cause of, of death of little children. Um, but the babies that do survive prematurity can have many complications in the immediate uh, period, but they can also survive with lots of problems. They can have cerebral palsy, they can have um, intellectual problems, they can have behavioral problems. So there's, there's lots of problems. They can even have um, uh, metabolic uh, syndrome as adults. This places a lot more pressure on the new parents, and we know that just being a new parent in itself is quite a challenge, but having these kind of issues complicating things. So let's set the scene here for those parents that are going into this, this phase of life. What do they need to prepare for, maybe mentally and emotionally, because it's going to be a roller coaster in that sense, and then especially moving into that discharge phase, what do you need in place? Okay. So, so firstly, if you know, so there's varying degrees of prematurity. So the, the bigger prems are maybe not so much of a big problem because they, they may have some problems but don't need to stay in hospital for a long time. But if you have a very early prem, firstly, you have to expect to stay in hospital for a long time, which is not easy. Um, and especially if you have other children, then you neglect them because you're spending all yeah, your time in the hospital. Stay, yeah. Um, and then even after discharge, because they often have problems that go on after they've left hospital. So you need to prepare. Uh, so breastfeeding is very important um, for all children, all babies, but even more so for, 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 yeah. for prem babies. And then also what we call kangaroo mother care, where the baby, where the mother puts the baby on skin to skin and that also is very good for the baby's development and, and also it promotes breastfeeding and also for stimulation and it has all sorts of benefits. So, so those are the things that the mother, and well, kangaroo care, even the father can do actually. <laughs> um, but also you need to expect that you'll be 
visiting the hospital quite a lot because there's, there's a lot of things that need to be followed up even after discharge. So, um, uh, one thing I will say is because someone very close to me, my, two of my best friends, their, their firstborn was born mm. prematurely yeah. and I just, all I remember is us not being able to actually go and meet him. Mm. So, and you could only go one at a time and then stand yes. in the room with the gallery of people watching you bawl your eyes out because you're now meeting this little life in that yeah. situation. But it also reinforced to me how good our doctors are working um, in this pediatric space really are and the teams of nurses. So we are well looked after in that space. So you keep doing the amazing work that, that you are doing. <laughs> and you. hopefully to those parents that are out there that at least educate yourself and make a point of getting to know the team that's mm. going to be helping you through that journey but we are certainly sending you lots of love and positive energy if you're going through that right now it's my feel -good show. welcome back as we rejoin a very important medical discussion this morning and we are honing in on an incredible hospital right now. The Tigerberg Hospital services the Western Cape, the Eastern Cape, Northern Cape, and then parts of Namibia as well, in fact. The Tigerberg Hospital Children's Trust, a public benefit organization and non-profit organization, has the sole objective of supporting mother and child patients at the Tigerberg Hospital, and they are doing it with aplomb. Now, this morning, we are joined by Jason Falcon, the CEO of the Tigerberg Children's Trust, to discuss their role in supporting prematurely born babies and their families because they need a lot of support, and it's quite dynamic. Now, if you'd like to ask any questions, just head over to the Expresso Facebook page. You know we are tracking that constantly. Uh, Jason, welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you. And, and I suppose on behalf of all the parents and the babies that you've helped, thank you for the work that you are doing. Uh, maybe talk us through the trust as a starting point here and the kind of services and the help that you offer parents and baby. So the trust um, supports the children of Tiger Book Hospital which, as you mentioned, is, is quite a large footprint. So just in terms of kids, I think um, around 2 million kids in the province. So 60% of those draw to Tigerberg Hospital as a primary health care facility. Those are the kids that we support. Of course, Tigerberg Hospital supports a wide range of, um, of medical services. And the trust provides support across all of those. In terms of prematurity, um, that's very dear to, to the Trust Heart. We've been engaged with, um, with supporting them for many, many years. And Tigerberg Hospital has the most premium babies um, at push probably on the African continent. So wow. it's, it's, a, it's a large job for us to continually support them and the hospital staff that are, that are trying their best to, to support the kids there. Uh, and quite an emotional journey to walk. I've, I've experienced, I was saying to, to Gugu a moment ago, what it's like to be in that space with a premature baby, and it's so emotional. But our staff working in these facilities are amazing, and I suppose there is a massive advantage to have taken your institution's specialisation as far as you have, so you have the skills and you sit at the forefront. But what led to you using the trust to unlock that potential? What led to the establishment of the trust? Why go that route? Well, you know, the trust was founded way back in 2001 um, with the patronage of Archbishop uh, Emeritus Desmond Tutu and Malaya Tutu with the purpose of supporting the kids at Tigerberg Hospital. But, you know, the needs are so, so broad. Um, we've almost had to, as, as the trust, um, find a language to try and articulate that. Okay. And we do that through what we call four baskets of care, um, one of which is neonatology, the other is specialised care, um, general pediatrics and then social development, which speaks to the, the holistic approach to wellness that the trust takes. Uh, and I'm, uh, that social development angle is so vitally important here in South Africa where there is such a disparity between the haves and the, the have-nots. I think it's a challenge for a family with a lot of resource, never mind somebody who is coming from a disadvantaged position. So I, I get that and it makes so much sense. You obviously have to go above and beyond to get money in. We need ultimately funds to be able to support what you're doing. And to fundraise recently, you had the Tigerberg Hospital Children's Trust World Premi Festival. What was that all about? How did it go down? And, and what was the purpose of doing something like that? Well, you know, um, way back in 2019, some of the neonatal nurses approached us um, to, um, to help them celebrate World Premi Day, which is on the 17th of November. So we started a small community fair at the hospital with a 5K fun walk. Um, this year we decided, you know what, there's so much 
um, awareness firstly that needs to be driven around premature babies. And there's really such a community passion around supporting our premier babies. Let's do a festival. So we came up with um, a series of events and stressed that over the week. Um, according to Google, this is the world's first World Premier Festival, so we're quite right. proud of that. And um, the events are basically the same community fair and fun walk at Tiger Book Hospital that kicks off the festival. Um, that was on Saturday the 13th. Sunday the 14th, we did something very new. It's a 50 uh, one kilometer ultra charity run wow. from Gordon's Bay around Clarence Drive, that beautiful scenic route. It's a bit of a step up from the 5K. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Not the same audience, of course, <laughs> all the way to Claymont. Wow. And it's an invitational run for uh, very special athletes who are prepared to run that on behalf of our premiers. Brilliant. And the theme of uh, World Premier Festival is actually a lesson that we learned from Premier Babies, which is the courage and resilience to, to survive. And, and that's what the run is all about. Uh, and it's amazing how many of those premature babies, and I've again seen this firsthand, grow up to be such strong and wonderful human beings, I think because of the emotional support that they get. And it's amazing how a baby can pull a family together in that sense, and a broader family as well, like um, the, the family at Tigerberg. I know what you do is driven by purpose, so thank you so much for that. I look forward to next year, a, a three-day festival <laughs> taking place, and I might even give the 51K a crack, but a brilliant way to support a team, a family, as I said, doing amazing work in that premature baby space. Jason, thank you so much. Thank you. It's my feel-good breakfast show. Welcome back as we dive right back into a brilliant conversation this morning talking health matters, premature babies to be specific. And we have spent this week's health segment chatting with specialist neonatologist Dr. Gugu Kali as well as CEO of the brilliant Tigerberg Hospital Children's Trust, Jason Falcon, finding out a bit about the challenges faced for families and for those preemie babies as well as the, um, I think, the support structures that need to go into it. So we put it to you guys on our Facebook page to weigh in with any comments or questions. And I'll hone in on one comment that came through this morning. And, and Doc, maybe I can put this to you. Sharon was saying that she's, and just to cut her summated, that she's had three premature babies. Is there a genetic predisposition? Is there something that would lead to a woman having three? Do you look at it as three individual cases? Is there a common link? Um, so, so there are various reasons to have um, premature babies um, for different people. So if you have had one premature baby, the likelihood of having another prim baby is, 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 is higher. higher. Okay. But there are also, um, I don't know what Sharon's situation is, it may be that she has a, an illness that makes her get delivered early electively because of her own health problems. Yeah, um, it, there may be physical problems with the uterus that may make her go into um, prem labor early. So there's uh, various reasons that may make specific people more likely to have premature babies. Well, we certainly um, commend Sharon for having gone through that journey three times over. Jason, to wrap up from your side, you were saying a moment ago to me that you need to raise around 100 million, or at least that's the goal, which means you need help. How can the public support your efforts? What do you need? Well, first and foremost, we need lots and lots of friends. The Trust is just a small team of people, um, but we've created various platforms for people to come on board and support us. Okay. So we have a wonderful volunteering uh, platform called the Champions for Children. It's a very simple registration project, pro um, process. If you go to our website, which is tigerbergchildren.org.za, there's an online form you can fill in. Currently, our volunteers are sitting at 150 people. And, and they, they volunteer with all sorts of things. They help us with fundraising. They help us with events and awareness. Um, they help in and out of the hospital. So that's one way. And of course, we, we need lots of funds. Um, and you can also donate to us directly on our website. There's a, a payment portal there. Or just reach out to us and, and have a discussion around how you can get, get involved. Yeah, I always like to think you just catch the, right, catch the right person at the right time, that one CEO who has had a personal mm. experience in that space and yeah, you, you're already winning. Yeah. I just keep thinking, 
of the support that's needed mm -hmm. for a family that's going through this. So what do we do as partners mm -hmm. for each other, as parents, as mm -hmm. family members, friends? How do we support a family going through this process? In your experience, okay. seeing it firsthand, okay. what, what's mm -hmm. needed, do you think? Thank you. That's a great question. <laughs> um, so fathers can certainly get involved. So as I mentioned before, they can do the kangaroo mother care. And it's and lovely. Give, it's, give it's the a little bit mother of a bit of a break. Respite. Yeah, yes, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but also, if you remember, the, the parents spend a lot of time focusing on the premature baby. They spend a lot of time in the hospital. So friends and family can certainly help by taking care of some of the so practical things, some of the things that they can't now do because they're spending time. Especially if there are other with, siblings yeah. involved. Exactly. Yeah. They can take the other children out for a bit. They can help them with meals. Can help them take them to the hospital because for some of our parents it's actually not easy to get themselves to the hospital. So I think just remembering that they are, and, and it can also get quite lonely because yeah. you're now spending all your time with the child, so even just visiting them might might help them emotionally. <coughs> so much of this says community is mm. key here, which I think is why we have awareness days like this. Jason, I'm gonna I'm gonna round off with you because you obviously have there is a reason why you guys do what you do. Why should people support your efforts? Why is this work so important? You know, what, what I've learned is uh, premier babies come into this world um, fighting. So they actually teach us about courage and resilience, like I said earlier. But it doesn't stop once they leave the hospital. They seem to carry that throughout, their, and their families and their moms carry that throughout their whole lives. So um, they need support not just when they were born, they need support throughout the entire life cycle as a child and into young adults. How do we, as communities of people, um, gather around an organization like the Trust and leverage support to support our kids. I love that. We are one tribe. Every child is our child. That's the only way we move forward. You're both doing incredible work. Um, so the next time you pass each other in the halls, just <laughs> give each other a little a doff of the cap, just a little nod to say well done. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. I know it can be a very challenging and arduous journey, but with amazing people in your corner, I know it can be made simpler. The fact is there is a community out there for you if you are going through this journey. As Doctor pointed out, it can be incredibly lonely, so connect with that community. And certainly if you're a family member, if you're a partner, a parent going through this process, just make sure you take the time to make sure that you're okay as well and just sending you so much love.